Hola amigas o amigos, hello. Um, hope you're all doing well despite the very weird situation we all are in as this is a very weird time for humanity. Let's get to some lighter stuff. Food. Uh, today I'm not going to do a full cooking video but I've kept it for a few days and decided I like it so much and decided it does have an ingredient that I'm really in love with. Well, I've been in love with this ingredient since I was probably five. So um, I want to introduce this dish to you. So what is this dish? It's a soup. It's called Om. Now, according to my mum yet again, uh, I haven't, you know, gone with the completely correct recipe because I've added garlic which she says is not necessary. And uh, I don't have the, I didn't put in the holy basil or another form of basil, which I'm sure would make this soup pretty pimped. So let me tell you more about the om. The om is a soup. Uh, it can have more meat than vegetables or it can have more vegetables and meat, depending on what you want. It's very versatile and it's from the northeastern part of Thailand, Isan. But I think we can get similar um, similar versions in good old Cambodia, I think in Laos as well, because there is one key ingredient that uh, we all love and share, we, we all have in common in these three countries. I don't think Burma has it, but anyway. So this soup is basically like a, like a nice mix of vegetables again. Uh, you can have your standard set of vegetables. Popular vegetables that go in the om include pumpkin to make it nice and chunky. Um, I think any kind of greens. So if you're not in Southeast Asia or Asia, I would recommend you go with kale. But you know, if you have access to China some, some, somehow, um, bok choy, chai sim, even kai lime can be put in this, uh, just to add the greens into this. Um, my version today, I've added all my favourite veggies for this soup. Um, I love okra, so I've put lots of okras in. I had the opportunity to get uh, a very interesting plant, um, the vegetable fern, which is actually a fern and not a vegetable. Uh, but it's edible and it's really fun. Um, next time I can find it, I'll, I'll take a picture and I put in chai sim, put three types of mushrooms, oyster, chimechi and inoki. They're all really good with this and it, it's nice to taste, you know, eat the different textures of, of the different mushrooms in it and it absorbs the soup really well as well. Um, for meat, I used uh, pork belly, same pack that I used with other stuff. Um, waste not what not, as my boyfriend's dad likes to say. So, um, before I go to the star ingredient, which I talked to you passionately about, I want to talk to you about the, the key ingredients I had first. So, um, well, I had this. These are the starters. Uh, these are the main herbs. One missing is the spring onions, which was much spicier than expected because I used that in um, substitute for the uh, shallots. So now you can easily just toss in the pot, but the trick to making the soup really delicious it's very easy it's just toss in the pan so you toast in the pan until it burns a bit and you can smell like the spice is just going all over the place and it's just this heat and this lovely smell of herbs this infusion and the lemongrass is also is a very welcome smell in my opinion so you do that until they're all burned and then you add the meat in to get the meat flavor out just as a base to keep everything started and then you, you know from the stir fry you know small stir fry it turns into soup now to the star ingredient. So the star ingredient of this is the one and only and the very special Nampala. Ta-da! So I've used this brand from Golden Mile this time. Uh, this is the first time trying it. It's absolutely delicious. I love it. It's not too salty. Um, so it's basically fermented fish. And it's a, it's a beloved ingredient in uh, countries in the Mekong Delta region. So you can find it in Laos. I'm not sure if you can find it in Vietnam. You can definitely find Cambodia. And in Cambodian, um, in Khmer, uh, no, Cambodian, the, the, the name of it is Prahok. And the, one of my, the, the, my favorite dishes that I had in Cambodia was Prahok, the fermented fish, just like um, mixed with 
minced pork fat and grilled in banana leaf and I had it with sticky rice and it was just superb and like fresh chilies. So yeah, this is this is an umami feast. Um, I think it's definitely one of the pungiest, like the, the most pungent ingredient you can find. Um, my room smells like fermented fish for a day after this, so I only recommend you cook with it if you can deal with the smell afterwards. Otherwise, you just get pissed off and just don't want to touch it again, don't want to watch any of my videos again. Um, but yeah, it's definitely up there. It's beyond, uh, you know, if you think anchovies are stinky, this is way stinkier. Uh, the, the one difference between this and other kind of fermented fish is, you know, they use toasted they use rice to, to help ferment this. So it has that smell of fermented rice as well, which is what makes it so lovely. Um, it's great with some tum, it's great with soups. Um, it's great with stir fried noodles. If you want to have like a, you know, a, a, a exotic version of stir fried noodle, try this, not too much. Uh, too much can be overwhelming. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I've read somewhere that, you know, this is related somehow to sushi because sushi actually started as a way, um, I think the, the more, the earlier forms of sushi was the, um, uh, the, the pickled saba, the, uh, the saba on rice, which is a pickled version of it. So, um, and so it was actually a way to preserve fish. So first they used rice to preserve it and then they decided the fish was edible and the rice was edible and then they made it into sushi. And uh, some, some people say that sushi started from Southeast Asia, but um, this is not a history channel, so don't take my word on it. Okay, so yeah, so try to cook this. Now this soup, why is it so good? So I know people know the tom yum very well, green curry and tom yum, that's the most, the two most famous uh, soups from Thailand. But this one is, is, uh, is really good, it's comforting. Um, if you make it mild enough, you can just have it on its own. Uh, and the reason I wanted to, to recommend this is because, like, I mean, you know, vegetables, you think of stir fry, you don't think of soup that often, like this minestrone. So I just wanted to, you know, uh, introduce this alternative soup. And it, it's perfect for, you know, because when sometimes when it's winter or when it's still a cold spring or when it's a chilly autumn or, you know, when it's that time of the month, the, the ladies out there, you feel like something nice and homey and I think this is a perfect dish and uh, if you're not doing low carb just putting in some rice is really nice as well or eating it with rice is really nice so yeah um meats what meats would you use pork some people like the um the pork bone uh fish grilled fish can do work well as well chicken I think I, I actually really like chicken in this beef is okay beef I, I think is unnecessarily pungent um you know, I think I'd, I'd let the I'd let the herbs and the fermented fish and the veggies uh, take the show, um, take the spotlight in this one. Okay, so yes, I hope you get a chance to try this. If you have a good extractor fan, <laughs> otherwise it's really stinky. My room, my laptop, my bed sheets, my books were smelling like it. But um, I've opened the window for two days in a row now, and it's all better. So yes, try it, the on with the blara prahok or fermented fish. Have a lovely evening.